We have another prayer. Sometimes we say prayers for healing. Sometimes they're of joy. This one is one of gratitude. Um, we have in the years past been taking time and doing things for our veterans within the community. Um, and while we are not doing the same kind of a thing, it's important to acknowledge. So I'd like to share a blessing for our veterans that are here and those that are not. Almighty God, giver, sustainer, and strength of our lives, we ask for your blessing upon our veterans who have served in our country's armed forces. Overseas and within our borders, they have defended our country with courage. Many of them risked their lives to keep us from harm's way. Shield of Abraham, protector of Sarah, as you've watched over and sheltered these soldiers during time of war, so too may you guard them in times of peace. May they continue to serve their country, community, and synagogue as champions of righteousness and warriors for justice. Guide their deliberations and bless them, that they, as partners with you in creation, help bring us closer to an age where all the world shall be at peace. We say, Amen. It was a week or two ago, I, I mentioned, uh, mentioned Dr. Deborah Lipstadt, who is a well-known expert on the history, Jewish history and the history of the Holocaust and the history of anti-Semitism. And what I learned from her some years ago and, and shared a piece that she wrote in the forward just a couple of weeks ago, she said that it's, she's not an oi gewalt kind of a Jew. And that always resonated with me. And I find that our folks, you, our congregants, guests, folks connected to a Jewish community or just visiting, are feeling a lot more of oi gewalt than the joy of Judaism. We're saying oi gewalt as we hear about a bomb attempt in Pueblo at a synagogue, a synagogue with 30 households as members. We know that somebody is going around Pearl Street late at night sharing information, trying to say that Jews, again, that Jews are responsible for 9-11 and some global kind of conspiracy that we've been hearing long, long, long time. And it's this very Shabbat where we also mark Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. Some of us know of the name, maybe forgot about it. It does mean the night of broken glass. We've had members of our own community who have been witnesses to such a night. The official count is that about 7,500 homes and businesses, 267 synagogues were put to the torch. 36 Jews were killed and another 36 injured seriously. 38,000 Jews were arrested and sent to Buchenwald and Dachau and Sachsenhausen. For the Nazis, Kristallnacht taught that while the world might condemn their programs, it would not actively oppose them. November 9th and 10th of 1938, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, who's the president of the Reform Movement, the president of the Union for Reform Judaism, he he shared earlier today that this Shabbat all over the Jewish world, we will remember Kristallnacht, which was more than the shattering of windows and illusions. It portended the physical destruction of European Jewry. Our commemoration must be observed both as a memorial, but also a warning. How do we make peace with that? And we have such amazing friends from our congregation sharing their joy through Jewish music. And some of you are swaying more than usual, which is good. You're starting to lighten up, frozen chosen. And we're still trying to figure out how do we make that balance? How do you balance the joy of Shabbat, the opportunity to have a release, and the chaos that's happened in Jewish history and and the chaos that we feel here in Colorado a little bit more deeply than we did before. White supremacists and Pearl Street, of all places. Well, sure. 
Why are we surprised? Really? Why are we surprised? Outraged. Why are we surprised? We know that there's hate around us. But because somebody dresses up as an Orthodox Jew and makes a character of who we are, we're outraged, but we have a lot more to be outraged about. I was looking at some of my old sermons, which I tend not to do. And 10 years ago, 10 years ago at this time, President Obama was leading and the country was feeling just as divided and angry. And I wrote about, at the time, this one-man show, this one-act play, rather. Uh, it's called Anne and Emmett. And it tells the story of this imaginary conversation between a little Jewish girl, Anna Frank, who wrote in her famous diary about hiding from Nazi occupiers in Amsterdam, and another young black boy named Emmett Till, someone who was tortured and murdered in Mississippi in 1955. Someone wrote a play about the two of them having a conversation. And it was an amazing show at the time. It was something that was so important. And what I wrote 10 years ago was that the hatred we are seeing, and this is actually from that sermon, is more than just sad. It's sad and it's scary, and I confess that I never thought in 2009, I'd still be making sermons about anti-Semitism because I wasn't for a long time. We kind of felt that it passed. And for several years, we were focusing on responses about U.S. involvement in Iraq and peace in the Middle East, and we forgot that there was extremism in our own backyards. And we think, you and I now, think that this is some kind of new phenomenon that is just beginning to raise its head. And it's not. It's been around maybe a little quieter, or maybe we're not as complacent. At the time, 2009, overall attacks were down, but there seems to be an increase in severity in those recent months, 10 years ago. And I cited a Jewish Wesleyan University student was killed by a man who was carrying a copy of the Protocols of Elders of Zion in his pocket, a farce kind of message pamphlet that said the Jews were controlling the world. Four Muslim men were arrested at that time for plotting attacks on two synagogues in the Bronx and Newburgh Air Force Reserves. A Muslim man opened fire in Arkansas at a military recruiting center in April, and a Pittsburgh man shot and killed three police officers who were extremists right wing and who wanted to kill cops. And don't forget Dr. George Tiller, the OBGYN who performed abortions in the third trimester. Regardless of position or conservative or liberal, I'm not interested, folks. We have extremists among us, and at the time, what were the reasons? The economy, a black president, increased immigration, concern about Israel in the Middle East. Well, the same things are happening, but now we seem to be outraged and people are calling for more security and, and we're afraid. We're afraid, and frankly, I get it. I get it. But Deborah Lipstadt said something important for me, and I shared it with you recently. I'm going to share it with you again. Don't make Jews an object. Make Jews the subject. What Jews do today is important, not just what happened to us. I'm going to share our history. We have to remember Kristallnacht. We have important things to share in the world beyond our suffering. And part of what we're going to show, and the fact that you're here tonight after these news in Colorado, you're showing resilience. That's the muscle we need to start to strengthen. Strengthen the resilience. Strengthen our hope. Strengthen the ability to come inside this space, and maybe we're a little bit nervous. I get it. I'm thinking about it, too. It's not like I'm not. I'm not interested in the bravado. But... But how we live is what's important. How we choose is what defines us. How we behave is the most critical thing that's here. I have faith in our world. I 
I have faith in God. I even have faith in all of yous. You. <laughs> you didn't think I'd say y'all. I am here to say, let's not just yell gewalt, because this has been around for a while now. Long before us, God willing, not so long after us. But what we have done is to come to synagogue. And what we have done is to teach another generation. And what we have done is to sway and sing when friends are bringing Jewish creativity into our midst. And we have learned what our ethics are. And we say never again. Not just about us but we say never again to others who are suffering, who are hurting, who are lost. Our job, friends, is to go beyond the world, our walls here, and try and be concerned about a larger community. And within these walls, we try and figure out how people can be known and seen and heard and acknowledged. Our frights and all. It's easier to get through it together. So, when I say introduce yourselves, you should do that. You should share something. You're doing a good job, by the way, but it's not just silly. It's about coming together. The last thing I want to say is, and I know it's late, but tough. <laughs> last thing I want to say is, and I've told this to you before, I know one other time, in a trip to Israel, of all places, with my folks from my last congregation and our guide, who was from Wantaw, Long Island, who lived in Jerusalem for maybe 30 years, brought us to this inside the tunnels of the Western Wall, underneath the ground in new excavation. And in this space where we weren't supposed to be, he took us anyway, because he's now Israeli. and. He's hanging over this ledge in an underground tunnel, which made me a little ootsy. And as he's dangling over the ledge, you hear him scraping against the rock, and he shows us the soot from the destruction of the second temple that's in his hand. So Pueblo is scary, but it's not new. And we're here to talk about it, and we're here to celebrate, and we're here to do more than survive. We are here to make Judaism a living faith, a relevant, meaningful practice, something to inspire and to bring us comfort and to make us a little uncomfortable when we're getting a little too complacent. So friends, as the Torah portion is, says, Lech Lecha, Abraham goes forth to a new place, not knowing where he's going, but let's do that too, but let's do that together.